if I hear AI one more time, I, I just, I can't handle it anymore. Tell me how you really feel about that. <laughs> like, what's going on over there? I mean, there's one thing with buzzwords, but these two buzz letters, AI, it's driving me bonkers. <laughs> I, I feel like we got to talk about this. Like, I really do feel like we do, too. I mean, can we spend like a month on this? Let's go, baby. All of January. Nothing but AI. Okay, let's do it. Challenge accepted. Done. Welcome to the VIP Podcast. Season three. Let's go. Welcome back to another episode of the Vertifor Insurance Podcast. My name is Heath Sharon, and I'm very excited to introduce you to the one and only Sid Rowe accompanying me. What's going me. on? I just ran an awesome Iron Man, and I'm killing it in my life. <laughs> uh, welcome back, guys. We're really excited to have you. Today, <laughs> Heath and I have an amazing and very special guest on the podcast, the one and only Jamie Pierce, who, if you don't know is the Vice President of Partnership at uh, Synatic. Now, if you don't know Synatic, whew, uh, you, must have been, you must be living under a rock, first of all. Um, Synatic is one of the top uh, API-focused companies in the industry, but really, I would say, a thought leader around how data and the, the data conversation and data economy is evolving in the insurance uh, space, especially or specifically in the independent model. So um, Jamie actually messaged me on LinkedIn and said, Sid, we need to talk all things data. We need to get real. We need to get serious or as serious as Jamie can be. And, uh, <laughs> and we need to um, actually really focus on the conversation around artificial intelligence. And I think you will be surprised to hear some of the opinions that Jamie has around AI and ChatGPT and where this world is going. So with that, how are you, Jamie? I'm well in yourself, Sid. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Uh, yeah, dude, also, this is be good. yeah, there's nothing like his accent, right? I know that accent's fantastic. Isn't it so good? We got three <laughs> different accents on here, and and one of them's really, really good. So. Honestly, I, part, of, part of me when he messaged me was just like, I just want to hear his accent again. That's like, it. I need a recording of Jamie so when I wake up in the mornings, I can like start my day with Johannesburg, I, South Africa. I tried to get you like, to clear the room earlier and give me some time just to meet <laughs> Jamie just so I could hang out and get to know that accent. So I love it. Good. I love it. So wait, yeah. what time is it in South Africa right now? Yeah, it's not too bad. It is half past nine at night. Holy oh. smokes. Oh, wow. I got gotcha. you. Okay, so you've joined us at like like past bedtime. That's past my bedtime. <laughs> no, not mine. Okay. But yeah, I got it you. It is well before my bedtime. My bedtime is about 1 a.m. So still two meetings to go after this. So oh, it's, wow. it's, it's, that's smart. the run of the mall for us. Is that, wait, so is that life in South Africa as, a, as an insure tech owner who, who sells in America? You have to keep those hours? Yeah, so um, uh, dumb enough to try, smart enough to make it work. That's basically <laughs> That's our motto with regard to going to market in the U.S. from the South from South Africa. So yeah. we got a team in the USA, but it's it's we run operations out of South Africa. So it's it's got its challenges um sleep deprivation is one of them but <laughs> that's that's just it's what you sign up for and and until we yeah. until we fully scale out that team in the us that's that's just part of life but we are close to achieving that we're really narrowing down on our market focus what we're doing and and how we're achieving it and we're starting to get really good traction now which is exciting Did so Regardless if you're there or you're in America, AI is still AI, I'm assuming, and machine learning is still machine learning. Mm -hmm. Can you break that down yes. a little bit for us and tell us from your perspective kind of the differences in that and what that is, maybe the ones that are tuning in and still new to some of this. Do you mind you know, breaking some of that down? Yeah, I, I guess the, the best way to define AI is thinking like a human, is, is when a computer can self-generate its own learning, so effectively self-generate its own code. So it's it's very advanced and it's well beyond what most systems we see at the moment, if not closing on all systems we see. So there is a, a very thin layer of systems that are true AI as we see it. AI is is the ability to sense, reason, react and, and engage with, with data as it comes in and to learn around that data. 
machine learning is is kind of a sub portion of AI, um, where it uh, where it's enabled to learn off of data that's coming into the system, but it can't necessarily self generate its own additional learnings, as it were. So, um, I, I think what's happened in the market is AI has become almost synonymous with anything that makes systems work together. And that's a little bit, a little bit not what it. Well, it's a lot of it not what it is. Mm -hmm. So AI is a very advanced piece of technology that can truly go into reproducing what a human is, and that's actually quite challenging when you when when you actually stop and think about that. That's quite a big leap away from where most systems are at the moment. Yeah. So how many people do you feel like understand? AI or it's just like a buzzword they want to throw out to sound cool. It's totally a buzzword, man. <laughs> like it's 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 um, it's PowerPoints, BS, and uh, a different thing to put after the dot in your in your web address. So, um, for the most part, like let's just use that as a statement. So you, you know, it, it's a difficult thing to to understand but if you look at if you look at the well it's not a difficult thing it's just where humans are at the moment if you look at humanity per se we're pretty much a fad society so things become a fad and things become cool to talk about and then if you don't talk about it you're almost seen as a pariah and you're an outsider and you're not cool you're not on the inside circle and the the problem with that is it gives rise to these buzzwords so we've had iterations of ai for 20 years now, you know, big data was a big one like 10 years ago. No one puts big data onto their PowerPoints anymore today mm. just because it's it's not a fad anymore. It's not cool anymore. Right. If you're talking big data, you're talking 10 years ago. So is there a pragmatic move towards AI? Absolutely. Is there a real tangible coming of AI? And mm -hmm. is is it is it is it going to impact humanity? Yes, absolutely. ChatGPT is a classic example of that, but it, it's it's almost like people have latched onto ChatGPT, and and it's because it's become something that the consumer can understand. It's created this fear mongering of oh my god, it's going to take everything away, and and mm -hmm. that's that's gone too far at the moment. So it it is a lot of like PowerPoint, you know, just cool words that we can put up there to make ourselves look smart. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me let me give a quick example though. Get in there, because because these are fighting these are fighting words, Jamie. To say that AI, I mean, so you're talking to two marketers, especially like fads are our oxygen. It's a thing, it's right? Yep. So okay, so here's the thing, though. So I got I have to play the devil's advocate. Okay, I'll do the other side thing. Okay, be fun. Okay. all right, <clears throat> all right. So I have a friend who's a lawyer. Um, we were talking the other day, and he told me about a story that had sort of circulated in the legal field. There's a, a, a lawyer who ran his own shop and was taking a lot of cases around uh, flights that had been canceled. And I think people were trying to like get their money back or there was something going on with like litigation around flights being canceled or people not being able to get on flights, right? And so, uh, so he, he goes, to, so he's marketing and, and taking in all these cases, right? So he goes to ChatGBT from an efficiency standpoint and says, hey, ChatGBT, uh, you know, I need you to look up cases essentially around this situation, right? Give, give me, because with, with legal, you have to look at precedent, right? You got to look back and say, okay, well, what was precedent? And then I'm going to kind of make my argument based off of that. So he, the ChatGBT surfaces three cases. And, and I mean, from, you know, the case number to the case title to the case description looks completely legit. <clears throat> he takes and then cites, a, you know, some, some quotes from within the case. So he takes these three cases and he puts together his argument, his, his summary judgment, and then he sends it off to, to the courts, right? And so uh, the lawyers on the, the airline lawyers go and look up these cases and they can't find them anywhere they're completely fake like and so yep. the, the crazy part about that story to me was that i think it showed very clearly that you know chat gbt isn't out there just reconstructing parts of 
you know, it, it didn't go it didn't go out and just find cases and then like copy and paste them and put them into the screen that he was looking at and say, here you go, we resurfaced, you know, parts of something else and made it a new whole. It literally went and created something that didn't exist. And by the way, that guy didn't even want it to do that, right? He wanted it to go and copy and paste. And instead it was like, you know what? We're gonna give you a little more than that. We're gonna level things up. We're gonna create something that doesn't exist. Is that just like, I don't know, it's just, it's kind of scary. It blows it my mind a little bit. Um, so, so therein lies the rub is when you get into the detail of AI. So yeah. if, if you look what one of the things that AI is supposed to be able to do is reason like a human. And that has not reasoned like a human because you didn't tell it to. So I still think that ChatGPT does just put a, pre, a precursor out there. I still think that ChatGPT does fall into the AI, into the AI bracket, the true AI bracket. Mm -hmm. But the reality, though, is that there are instances where ChatGPT is is an out and out failure. So and that's a that's a very real example. And there's a litany of them. There's there's um, people who have asked ChatGPT to optimize their code. Um, and that's got two problems. First of all, you've effectively uploaded your code into a public property um, Mm -hmm. store of data so now all of a sudden you don't mm -hmm. own, own your code anymore mm -hmm. second of all who's now responsible for actually checking that code and checking that it is valid and that it works it still falls back to a human mm -hmm. so it is it is a progression of ai and it is ai is coming so there are things that are ai and are coming mm -hmm. but even there the reason but of a human's logic is lacking a little bit and or a lot in as one may argue so you look at that and that's a great example of where ai doesn't necessarily fit and you can't just bang everything at ai and that that's part of the frustration in the market at the moment right is that no disrespect but marketers do that they they throw throw a Web, web address dot AI and then claim AI throughout the website and everyone mm -hmm. eats it up and it's like yeah but is mm -hmm. there is it really there and mm -hmm. the challenge is like it's difficult for people to educate themselves because how do they go and read up about that information how do they actually understand the intricacies of it and and that mm -hmm. is it's it's a challenge well yeah. even when you talk chat GPT you can even prompt it wrong though at this point in time and you don't have the right prompts mm. in there if you don't say the right things it mm -hmm. can give you things and i've gotten in situations where they don't have data beyond or ahead of 2021 or something to that effect mm -hmm. and so there's still some things within that that can cause some challenges there and alone and alone in itself because again just the prompts alone can get some crazy answers you and i could be looking for the same right. thing and prompt it two different ways and get totally different data Totally. I mean, you look at a very topical discussion of like, is should Do should Donald Trump be the next president of the USA? Like, you're going to get some significantly different answers because there's significantly different pools of data around that. Mm -hmm. Which one is right? How do, how do I how do I prompt that right? And if I am prompting it, I'm using my own reason in it again. So so it's and not to bring politics into it. That's the last time I'll mention politics, but <laughs> it's an example of how mm -hmm. how differing opinions can create very differing answers and, mm. and information if you don't guide it to what you want it to be. Oh, I thought we were going to go to church next. You got into politics already. I thought. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, here, here's another, um, another example we can kind of take apart. So Heath and I, and I'm not going to mention the company. Okay. Um, but Heath and I talked to a, a We're company. Doing this again. We're okay. doing this again. I'm just going to tease it out on every podcast I love from it. here on out. I think it's great. It, it just it keeps fitting in the conversation. So. It does. All right. So this company, interestingly, um, I started as an well, they started as something else. Uh, also, they now have an insurance agency. They've been doing it for a couple of years. So they have a relatively good sized database. Now they're building on top of this database a generative AI powered insurance agent robot. Now, when you when I first heard that, I thought, holy smokes, they're gonna come into this industry and try and, you know, replace the agent, replace the producer, replace the service person, right? And it and it became very clear within about five or ten minutes of talking to them that that is not the direction that they wanted to take. They're they're seeing this thing as something that can assist 
with some of the more mundane yeah. activities that a service or salesperson might have to do on a, in a day's or a week's work. But the problem that they're running into is that with a virtual assistant, which is what a lot of agencies now use to do some of that more you know, sort of monotonous work, you can have a virtual assistant go and get licensed. And so they can do some of that service activity that requires that you know, regulatory check. Um, this computer program technically can't do some of that activity today. So what they're doing is they're, they're educating it right now for the next couple months and by Q1 of next year, they're hoping that it'll be in a place, it'll be smart enough, intelligent enough, whatever, that they can put it through the insurance exam and get it licensed. So now yep. it can sort of be that right hand for, for a service person or for a salesperson. Um, I don't know. I mean, like, part of me, I'm like, that's kind of scary. Part of me, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of cool. But either way, that's a, I, it feels like a huge difference in the, it feels like a little bit of a mover shaker in the industry. Like, does it does it feel like a disruptor, but also Did going back to the previous conversations I've had about it is, I still think you can replace the relationship aspect with that, even with the robot. Exactly. I just don't think you can. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, Jamie. She just laid that out for you, whether it's the first time you've heard it or not. You know, so I was at the Keystone Conference doing a, a talk on stage two weeks ago, and and I get I get I'm an excitable person. So like, I went from <laughs> sitting back and kind of having a chat, and like actually like took a seat on the edge of my perch, and I was like leaning into, and literally physically leaning into, and going like. You need to understand, like if anything, COVID taught us, humans need humans. Amen. It is what mm. we are built to do. We are built to interact. We are built to to see each other, to read body language, to engage with each other. It's, it, is, it is a carnal need of ours. Mm -hmm. And nothing of that changes when you get to, um, when you get to insurance. I want to be able to call somebody and say, um, you know, XYZ has just happened with my car. I've just been in a car accident yeah. and I almost died. And I want you to be part psychologist, part insurance agent. Mm. Like that is real. It happens well, to people. Yeah. You, you bring it up it's, into a bot. It's three fourths psychologist and the other part agent most of the time, which goes back to your point. Yeah, totally. I, I, it, entirely because you're protecting my assets. Right. Like yeah. you right. are literally my relationship with you is me yep. trusting you to protect my assets. I am effectively trusting you with my worldly possessions. Like mm -hmm. that is what I'm doing when I insure through an agent so or, or broker. So if I don't have a relationship there and I'm dealing with a bot, sure, everyone from the tech side is saying, but it's more efficient too. And the humanity aspect of that comes in and says, I don't give a crap about your efficiency. I want to talk to somebody. And we've all been in that situation. You know, you pick up the phone and you like dial one to get to service department. Yeah. Dial two if you had this happen. Dial seven if you've had that happen. And it's just like by the end of it, you literally like just give me a freaking human to talk to. I will pay you more to talk to a human. I want to talk to a human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if it would have been Something we should be scared of now, it happened with some of the larger telephone companies, uh, not to be named AT&T or Sprint or any of these other ones. I think a larger company would have already figured this out because they do those conversations all the time and they haven't been able to figure yeah. it well, out. Well, but so. how do you know? Well, well, hold on though. How do you know that they haven't figured it out? Like, so this, how do you know that you're Because my neighbor talking... works in the call center. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a robot. I'm just kidding. No, I don't know how uh, that we don't Are you sure know. that your neighbor's not a robot? That's true. That's very true. I'm just kidding. I also go back to my nine-year-old self who was scared of the flying skateboards when, fly, when the sure, Back to the yeah, Future yeah, came yeah. out, yeah, and yeah, it yeah. still hasn't happened. You know, yeah. uh, and I was sitting here thinking, you know, we're going to have flying skateboards by 2023, and we don't. Yeah. But we did see robots walking around a football game. We did see that on Twitter. Recently, yes, which was that. freaky. That was they freaky. Look, I mean, they don't look like humans, but they no. kind of look like humans. I mean, uh, it's it's that's... That's blowing my mind. It is. So, but again, they also look like, super confused. What, there's <laughs> there's got to be the wusa moment around that because <laughs> right? what is that? What is that really? What it's 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 a robot that's been designed to use uh, 
a, a function of distance of, of various controllers that says I shouldn't walk here, I shouldn't walk here. It can do a very specific thing. So as I say, I don't think you can discount AI entirely at all. I would never say that. But at the moment, that robot, can it reason? Can it learn? Can it do multiple different things and teach itself how to do things better? Right. Are we at that stage right here, right now? Yeah. And right here, right now, I love that, like using a bot to augment what the human is doing and what can I do right here, right now to cement my relationship with my customers so that I'm irreplaceable because yeah. that's how you can secure business going forward yeah. is you build that relationship so strongly. So take out all that crappy manual work and focus on what makes you truly valuable, understanding your customers' assets understanding what makes your customer scared and worried about their future, understanding how you can secure that and giving them a reasonable price on that. Mm -hmm. So there's a ton of stuff that comes before we get to the point where there's truly, truly intelligent, self-reasoning AI automation. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Cause I was going to ask, the big question in the future, so you go first. Oh, I was just going to ask, okay, so if we break this down to the listeners who are listening, maybe put it on the bottom shelf a little bit, can you give a good use case of where should mm -hmm. agencies right now should mm -hmm. use AI to be more efficient, and not in a scary way, so, so to speak, but like where agencies right now in America should be using AI in their agency? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so there are things that you can definitively do with chat gpt for right here right now so you can um so say for instance you can fetch a renewal you've downloaded the renewal you know that the renewal is more than 10 percent. we all know that rate hikes are are a problem at the moment for a while and what you yeah and what you can do there is you can say, I'm gonna pass a set of data into ChatGPT4 and say, write me an email to explain to this customer why their rates are increasing, what factors have caused a rate increase in whichever sector, home insurance mm -hmm. over the last, you know, one year in the, let's use a topical one, Florida region. Mm -hmm. So you, you, sorry, Florida state. So you can go and do specific things that really augment that relationship and you can do those en masse. That's truly powerful. So mm -hmm. now what yeah. you're doing is you're creating personalized interaction en masse, especially for your, um, not that any customer ever gets discounted to being meaningless, but for your lower value policies, you want to try and automate that as much as is possible so that your mid to higher value policies, you can really go and say, well, actually, Heath, we, I'm going to buy you lunch and we're going to sit down and we're going to have 42 beers before we start talking about your policy because A, you'll sign it off easier and B, I want to treat you. Yeah, I like the 42 beers later. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I think policy comparison, too, is one that I've heard. So you could take... Yeah you know, two quotes and, or, or two, you know, take a policy and take a quote and sort of compare and contrast, right? I mean, who has time today to read 40 to 60 pages of contract right. language? Agreed. Uh, so you yeah. could, you can sort of say, hey, look at these two things, pick out the gaps, um, where's one different yep. than the other? Uh, I've not seen that, um, but I've heard that agencies there, are There are a couple of solutions out there on that. Yeah. Um, so Xdion builds one, Resource Pro builds one, Patra is building one. So yeah. there yeah. are a couple of solutions out there. Again, I argue whether that's true AI. I think a, lo mm -hmm. a lot of the sure. scraping of data off of PDF and OCRing data, what we call OCRing, optical character recognition, technical term, which is scraping data off of PDFs. Mm -hmm. I think it's fallen well into the AI realm and it's not really AI. It's been punted as AI because it makes it sound cooler. And, and it's going it's back to the really, buzzwords. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it's, it's not really like if you look at, at how we, we see the dirty end of that scraping of data off of PDF, it's never a hundred percent accurate. Like at best, at best, best it's 90 percent accurate at very best mm -hmm. even with computer written text not handwriting like proper typing it in even there it will make mistakes mm -hmm. like flat out 
-hmm. There is no way to take the human out of that loop entirely. It's yeah. it's just impossible. It's not the tech isn't good enough yet. Yeah. So, I, I again I look at that and I, like absolutely policy checking it, it sucks. It's a horrible process, mm -hmm. necessary, but it still sucks. Mm -hmm. But the the truth of it is is like is that really AI? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean I I think the last one the last use case I've heard is marketing. So you know a lot of agencies. Uh, some have marketers, some don't. Um, and for those that don't, uh, honestly, for those that do too, I think they're using ChatGBT to create marketing copy, uh, Blog blogs, posts, yeah. yeah, things they can put on their, their website. So, you know, that's, that's sort of another area. And you can create I've, like videos with stock images and stock videos and the whole yeah. nine yards using yeah. some of that. And I've seen some of that as yeah. a good yeah. use case. Yeah. Is there any that make you scratch your head and like why? Like any of those on the opposite side of that? No, okay. there's more the ones that make me scratch my head and say, "Is that real?" Is, like because I look at it and I, get, I technically go okay. like, "Yeah, it, it just doesn't fly," you know. Mm -hmm. And and the more we've looked at it, the more and we look at this technically every single day. We talk about building AI stuff into our solution. So mm -hmm. like we built in a, we've we've found a a long story short a database that has addresses in it and how we can corroborate is this a valid address or isn't about isn't it a valid address so just a surface level like is this a valid address not is this heat's address is this a valid address mm -hmm. and and even there like we found some ai stuff we've done there and it, and it's pretty cool stuff but it, it's it's still borderline it's it, it's it, is it really self-generating logic and that's the key thing to testify is this truly self-generating logic or is this just a buzzword to get me buy, uh, get me to buy another bright shiny object so that i have more bright shiny objects sitting in my stable of bright shiny objects right. and that aren't really performing the function that they're supposed to be performing right 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 yeah well i think it's you know, sometimes people want to start with the solution and not the problem. Uh, and so, yeah, AI exactly. is cool. Solutions looking for a problem. Right, 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 right. Okay, so let and me... that's a big problem in the industry at the moment. Is, it is. It's like there are a lot of solutions looking for problems. And if you, you have, uh, it, it is the, the provider's responsibility to say, what is the problem? And how do we build out solutions for that? Mm -hmm. So like I'll use an example where we could so easily sell what we're doing in direct bill commission at the moment as a as AI. We're like we might be. We we might actually end up going that route just because we kind of have to, because kind of everyone else is. Yeah. But it 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 actually truly isn't. What we do is we have an RPA process, robotic process automation, so something that mimics the human's click. It clicks onto Traveler's website and it clicks fetch the Excel document, downloads it to a location. We fetch that file, we process it, we check it against the policy that is in the AMS. And if it's against a valid policy, we then automatically insert it into the AMS. Or mm -hmm. we go and say, hey, human, you need to step in here because what the carrier's policy number is and what mm -hmm. your policy number is ain't talking to each other. Mm -hmm. Now, could we put that under a shroud of AI and say, this is magical stuff? Sure, absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. It's But it, it it's, just, it's there, it's doing stuff with data, that's cool. So yeah, I, I think, go ahead. No, I was just gonna comment, uh, it sounds to me like you're, I've heard from you, a lot of things are getting mis, you know, I guess misdiagnosed as AI that's not truly AI. And yes. I didn't realize there was that much of that out there. Just a statement. You're no, I think you're right. And and my thought on that was, well, maybe part of the problem is ChatGPT, right? Because it is. Because, because we just gave two examples to you and said, okay, here's here's ChatGPT doing AI. And you said, no, that's not AI. But we think, well, ChatGB, anything ChatGPT does is AI, yeah. right? And so, th so therefore, like... Yeah policy checking is now AI, even though it's not AI, but ChatGPT does it, so it's AI, right? So I don't, I, it, I struggle with like the ethical part of it, right? Because I can tell that that's where you were going, right? You were like, oh, well, it's not really, it doesn't fit neatly into the box of artificial intelligence. And so therefore 
you know, ethically, if, if we marketed it that way, would it would we be lying to people, right? And so I think like yeah. there is there is absolute, and as a marketer, you have to have to have to go through that thought process, right? You have to think about the ethical concerns of the story and messaging you're putting out. Absolutely, I don't want to downplay that at all. I think at the same time, you have to also think about the language that the market you're marketing to is accustomed to and is using, right? And exactly. so, so like for example, I remember this was way back in the day when I was first first learning marketing and I was working with Ryan Hanley. And he gave this example to me of- Name dropping, what? I got you, uh, I got you. You know, sometimes. So anyways, <laughs> so he, he gave me this example <laughs> of when he first got into SEO and you know how he wrote this blog post about calipers for uh for how to it was something around auto insurance and, and calipers right and so he, he published the blog post and just just a flat line like dead no traffic nothing didn't didn't go on didn't uh increase in search rankings or anything and so then he's listening to this guy you know talk about what happened to his calipers and he realized the guy said uh, you know, my brakes were squeaking, right? And so then he wrote yeah. the blog post, how to fix squeaky brakes, right? Or what to do about squeaky brakes or how your insurance can help with squeaky brakes, something like that. Boom, blog mm. post goes up to page one. Search traffic goes up, right? So I, I, I think there's, you know, I think we could, well, but you know, squeaky brakes aren't calipers and calipers aren't, oh, okay, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And so there's there's that consideration, right? But there's also like, what is the language that people are using and how is it evolving to, I think is, is the hard part of that. Mm. And I don't know, that would just be my no, thought. It, it, I, I don't know where that falls, <laughs> right? But right. But I entirely agree. And, and, yeah. and as I say, like there is a real, like we have to start marketing towards AI because yeah. if we don't, we're, we're not cool. We're not in the cool club. You know, so yeah. like it, it's it's a thing for us as much as we can have these debates about what is AI, is this true AI, isn't it true AI? No one really gives a crap because they're uh, that is the language they're talking and they want to get that out. So that that is what it is. It's a reality statement. Yeah. Um, I, I think the. The, there is value in being a little bit countercultural, and you get some reads by being a little bit countercultural. So there is the, uh, the uh, like I get your analogy on brakes and calipers and squeaky brakes and calipers, but that's not necessarily the situation. We can still talk about AI by not talking about about AI, if that makes sense. That's that's so, fair. So that, that's fair. That's something we 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 are quite conscious of, um, but. But yeah, I, I just think it's like the, the overall risk for me is actually about the agent who doesn't understand it and gets lulled into a, another false sense of security because they've got another piece of um, another, another bright, shiny object that doesn't really achieve what it's meant to. And there's a great, there's a great saying, which is um, when there's a gold rush, don't, don't go after the gold, invest in shovels. So, like, move love the that. data. I don't, love that. don't go for the, don't go for the bright shiny stuff yeah. because the bright shiny stuff. Yes, there are going to be some people who are going to win big time there, but there's going to be a lot of of people who fall off that wagon. When you when you're shifting the the dirt and doing the grunt work that nobody actually wants to do, yeah. it, it that that is that is the true value in actually moving that dirt. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree with that. By the way, you're always in the cool kids club. So if that was ever <laughs> right, I agree. let's just get that out there. Plus that shovels quote. That was oh, phenomenal. that was really good. That was good yeah. stuff. Uh, I'm gonna go buy some shovels. See you guys at Lowe's. Um, okay, yeah. so here's my last last question here. So this is like future thinking, long term. We've kind of talked about short term. You know, in the immediate, it's don't be scared of AI. Um, you know. Oh, you know what? I do kind of want to ask you actually before I go into the long shot question. What? <laughs> I'm sidetracking myself here. Scroll moment it's a, here. It, it is because it's, it's such okay. a crazy topic. So what about though? Short term, um, the 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 uh, 
d dangers in terms of like security concerns, right? So like I, I've heard stories of, you know, for example, somebody calls up somebody's grandma and the grandma's voice is recorded and then they put the voice through an AI machine and say, okay, you know, AI machine, yeah. make grandma say this. And then so then grandma calls, you know, daughter and is like, I'm being held hostage and I need $10,000 or something like that, right? Um, yeah. And so- It's a Liam Neeson movie. Right, yeah, oh, right, yeah. Uh, so- no, that stuff's real, hey? That stuff's happened, hey? Yeah. For real. Well, I mean, like, that's, that's not a, that's not a uh, folklore. That, that, that exact example has actually happened. Yeah. It's crazy. And so, you know, I think there's like, well, you know, maybe we move to a world where families have passcodes or safe words or something like that, right? So it's like, Grandma, what's the safe word? And if she doesn't say it, it's like, okay. Yeah. Um, so, but that's, how, yeah, what, what, I mean, short term, that stuff's happening today. So, and it is using AI. Um, that seems to be something we should fear and consider dangerous. Yeah. What about... I, I would totally agree. I think there's a whole... I mean, I look at this and I go like, well, if I was an insurance agent, what I'd be doing right now is I'd be going out to every single carrier and saying, do you have an AI product? Like, mm. literally, I would be looking to launch, if, uh, to go to market as one of the first insurance agents who are launching AI insurance. Because it's a thing. It's real now. Mm. The, it, the, this isn't like farcical skateboards from back to the future like the it's 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 there right the, well, the, that is those stories are real those stories are happening so mm -hmm. like businesses are going to succumb to it mm -hmm. people are going to succumb to it it's mm -hmm. going to happen so mm -hmm. I, I i don't i don't disagree with you at all i think it is I, I think fear is the wrong word i think there's too much fear around ai i think Agreed. it's something that we should be cognizant of and pay attention to I I start thinking about I live in a house with six Alexas and I start thinking about the world when my Alexas start talking back to me and like hearing conversations in the house and settling arguments for me and my wife or you know talking yeah. to my kids as they're doing homework and talking about things actually the answer is this or I start yeah. thinking about that world which kind of scares me but also kind of cool at the same time uh, where they hear me talking about our garage door is broken. Next thing, Alexa orders it for me without even me asking or mm -hmm. something to that effect where they start learning, is that AI or is that just me using AI just being cool? It was just a totally different thing with Alexa altogether. <laughs> no, I think that is AI. I think that can yeah. solidly fall into the category of self-generative mm -hmm. and using its own reason. But ironically, for that very reason, I will not have Alexa in my house ever it, fr it freaks the living daylights out of me like something that's listening all the time freaks freaks me out mm -hmm. it, bro it totally me too but me I, and, it changed my world you know i started using alexis but anyhow go ahead yeah no i no i agree with you it does change your world but at the same time get off your ass and change the light bulb yourself you know or switch the light on and off yourself you know like no i get I'm not, it i'm not i get I'm it. trying to be can counter what you're saying but like at the same time there's an element of real in that of like well where, where's the boundaries there and i think that's going to become a far more topical conversation i think people are going to get a lot more serious about their privacy mm. very very yeah, quickly you're, you're as right. they see more and more of that coming through but it's really nice for me is forgetful when my wife says grab ketchup i can say alexa grab you know put ketchup on the list or you know yes. if i want to hear a certain song hey alexa play john mayer um, or whatever it might be, you know, I can, you know, have that kind of thing. I don't, you're right. There's a lot of scary to it, but our phones are listening to us every day as well. Everything's mm, listening to us. So, I mean, we, that's a whole other podcast for another day, but there is that element too. I was just wondering what your thoughts were on that. I, yeah, uh, it, 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 it's a tough one. And, but I do think, I, I think within that there will be, there will be the mainstream things and then there will be offshoots of that which become more and more private and secure and become more and more um, protective around it. I mean, I, the interesting thing, a, a total side point, but I mean, Alexa has been a horrific failure for Google. So that that is a, a whole nother discussion as well. It, it hasn't hasn't gone as well as they thought it would. Well, Heath is keeping them alive. Right. So. <laughs> I didn't Ordering know that ketchup. Alexa was a Google thing. I didn't realize that. 
Yeah. Oh no. Well. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Dr- AWS. 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 Yeah. Amazon. Yeah. But sorry, yeah. that's an Amazon sorry. thing. But yeah. Way. I saw. Yeah. I saw no, they I slashed. That up. I messed that up. Sorry. I saw they slashed their prices on them by like fifty or seventy percent or something. Maybe that's why we have seven of, the of them. I have no idea. But yeah, that could every be room it. in our house has them. And they're yeah. fantastic. They're actually yeah. ordering themselves. Right. You just they're don't like know it. Yeah. <laughs> and then they walk and you. pop up different there places you in your house. Oh, I just do an but old they, school but they are gonna, reference. there is going to come that point where there are genuine security concerns about that and yeah. and it's so I've thought a lot about this over many years basically since Terminator came out so you look at like where where is the wheel in Terminator and is that something that Skynet can really become this overarching self-generative um domineering force and that that's really what you that question leads towards is can that become the long term? And I like to think there's enough pushback in humanity that at some point humans are going to go, whoa, they, this is too far. Yeah. And I think that. Do you really think that'll happen? So, I, I do. Yeah, so I that, that was going to be my long term question. Is I, that yeah, like. I was, I, I'm I trying to steal your thunder. I yeah. wanted to ask it, but I knew you were. Well, so okay. this, this is the thing is like AI right now is like, it's like a little baby. If we're talking about the extreme danger of AI, we're talking about it potentially yeah. hurting the human race in some Agreed. way, right? And so, like, so it, right now it's in its infancy, but as it starts to become more intelligent, right? You know, sure, it, it can respond to to human questions or problems on a website or through a phone call very simply, like, I'm sorry that happened. But what happens when you put it through seven years of therapy and it gets its therapy license and it comes out the other side and it's able to have like complex, emotionally intelligent conversations? To your point about the dangers, I had this whole conversation at a conference last week of an agent scared that the competition was going to use a robot to start calling all their customers and saying, hi, I'm Sid Rowe. I've closed my doors down due to the hard market. And now the reputation's already been damaged. There's a lot of danger that could happen with these yeah. robots or with AI or whatnot. Yeah. But again. Yeah. Well, and, and the issue, too, is that once it becomes that intelligent and once it becomes that smart, then, you know, and you give it a, a job, it's just going to keep doing that job until it until when it's never going to stop. Right. And so yeah. you, you have to when wonder. When it becomes truly self-generative. Yes. Ooh. Right. And so you have to wonder, okay, well, what's going to stop it at some point? Um, and is so I just, I wonder long term what's going to happen here and how, you know, I, I've watched. And it's vetted. Yeah. Sorry, you've watched? Well, you know, you watch how, uh, I said we weren't going to get into politics, so maybe we shouldn't go this route, but we've watched, you know, the regulatory landscape struggle to set privacy, you know, guidelines and boundaries around how we use first party data and third party data and so if it, if we struggle that much with just how we collect and use data i wonder what's going to happen can we keep up with ai right is my fear so um south africa yeah again again, again <laughs> i think there's enough humanness in the in the process where humans will at some point push back and and i think there is that argument that humanity is strong enough to say no i won't accept this i won't i won't take it and and i i prefer to err on the side of optimism there Mm. and believe that humanity will say at some point this is too far and i mean it's already like it's just with the release of chat gpt4 well chat gpt per se there are board members who've exited ChatGPT and said, you don't understand what you've started here. There are board members who said to the government, you have to start looking at controls on this because this can grow legs to such a degree that it can become that humanitarian risk, as it were. So there are already those voices who are saying this is going too far and we're as you say, in the infancy. Mm. So mm-hmm. I, I think it's about finding the edges and finding what we can and can't do. Italian government blocked using chat GPT. They said, Interesting. that's it. Interesting. And the school, a lot of school not. systems are doing that now too. Yeah. My kid's school is uh, outlawed. Yeah. Outlawed, is that the way it sounds like Wild Wild West? But 
has said they can't do it, but I wonder, you know, how much further it can go, uh, to your point, that the legs it can grow. So yeah. would that, it becomes an education issue at that point. Is there a lot of people that are just ignorant to it that are using it in the wrong way? Or can we find some way to educate the masses on what true AI is and what ChatGPT can and cannot do? I, I, I don't think there's a, so no is the direct okay. answer there. I, I, I think the pragmatic reality is if you look at the broad array of humanity we have on earth, there are too many people to educate on what that means. Like 8 billion people is just a stonking number to go and say, we're going to educate them or whatever. Take it as five and a half billion of adults over 18. You know, there's, there's too many people in that. I think we've got to, we, I think humanity will in time edge its way back again and say, well, what are the boundaries and what are the edges to this? Mm -hmm. And we will guide it. I, I think like the, I think any agent who's, who's out there at the moment listening to this podcast and saying, oh my God, the robots are going to come and come, <laughs> sorry, the robots are coming and they're going to take over my business. It's so far from that. Yeah, like sure. we are, yeah. I'd estimate at least like two, three decades away from that truly, truly happening. Wow. So okay. it, it's it, it like really, really happening. And and again, I still think there's ways to entrench the relationship. And this comes back to my point about humans. And, and I think this is where humans will push back because humans will say, well, I don't want to talk to a machine. I want to talk to a human who can reason through and understand what my challenges are at the moment. The human brain is an insanely complex tool and to even think of how complex it is even though we use what like 10 percent of it less than 10 percent of it like to think that we're going to create a computer that can go through all of that reason and logic it's it it's a way off yeah yeah okay all right well thank you for putting our fears around yeah. ai to bed we appreciate you for those of you guys listening if you don't follow jamie on linkedin i would strongly recommend it um he is somebody who um i, I definitely would say challenges the industry and just somebody you should have in your circle if you don't have them in your circle yet so uh if you want to check out synatic uh you know they are honestly one of the top companies to look at if you are looking at or trying to find someone to help with connectivity issues between software um you know jamie i mean you could probably do a better pitch than i could here but <laughs> making sure that you're really weaponizing your data um and and getting the maximum value out of it i would say um so reach out if you if you need anything from the Synatic team and Jamie thank you again from for joining us from yeah. South Africa at 9 p.m. at night thank you so much <laughs> now no it's worries. almost 10 it's got to 10 p.m. now yeah it's four good. past 10 there you go all it's right. not too bad all right well good luck on the the next two calls cool thanks Sid. <laughs> Well, that was a great episode. Amazing. It was an amazing episode. I really enjoyed that content. Guys, if you enjoyed that content and you want more of it, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Nah, dude. You got to tell them to crush it. Crush that subscribe button, guys. All right. Whether you want to crush it, smash it, hit it. Bop it? Sure. We could bop it. Either way, guys, we don't want you to miss another episode. We enjoy spending time with you, the VIP. Yeah. We'll see you next week.